Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, April 16th, 2013. Google continues to release more information in anticipation of their Glass Explorer program. Join us now to tell us more about the Google Glass effort is SiliconANGLE contributing editor, John Casaretto. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Along with yesterday's Glass API release, Google has officially announced specs for the Glass Explorer editions. So, John, we're very interested in hearing about the official specs, but more importantly, we want to know how these specs compare to top-of-the-line smartphones and tablet devices that are currently on the market. So can you take some time and break down the main features of the device for us? Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, you know, the glasses have got a, a 5 megapixel camera for uh, photos, but it, it films in 720p. So what you'll see feature per feature here is that um, it, this doesn't really line up with with like cutting edge phones and you know those are like eight megapixels and they film in, in high res and all that um, and it definitely doesn't have the same kind of space you know it's a smaller form factor so it's something that's still developing and uh, you know it's, it's really made for a different use but uh, you know the, the glasses they've got uh, 12 gigs of usable memory 16 gigs of flash memory overall the memory is synced with uh, cloud, uh, Google's cloud storage. Um, glasses are supported by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but uh, not by 3G at this point. Um, they're compatible with any Bluetooth-supported phone. Um, so you got a number of things there, uh, and, and you've got it, it's also synchronized with the My Glass Companion app, and therefore it enables GPS, SMS messaging. Um, the battery is expected to last about a day during typical use. Uh, one thing, one detail we don't have yet is what the end of price will be, or you know, many details about when it'll be available to consumers and so on. But uh, you know, very interesting um, specs all across the board. Now, given that the specs aren't necessarily as um, up to date as some of the specs that we're seeing in the top of the line smartphones, but the price point, uh, which we've talked about somewhere around $1,500, is obviously more than leading edge phones right now. Do you think that consumers are going to be hesitant to explore Google Glass because of those two reasons? Well, we're still a ways out uh, before this really hits the consumers, but uh, we could probably expect a high price tag. I think what the the premium here really is the portability, uh, the miniaturization of you know the the different uh, components that go into this uh, is costly, and you know you you have to expect some some things that are compromised. But you know perhaps by the time it hits the consumer market, it would be enough that um, the the usability would be enough that people would be you know, not as, you know, uh, interested in some of those cutting edge features really um, that some of these, these uh, the feature set that it brings forward is, is going to be acceptable in, in that form factor. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the newly released Glass API? Well, it, it's a developer preview of, of uh, the Mirror API. It's for those developers that are out there and they're looking to just, you know, get started with uh, developing apps for the Glass e ecosystem. Um, it, it basically allows you to build the web-based services that's called Glassware um, that interact with the Google, Google Glass device, um, and it also, you know, does requires um, has no requirement of running co actual code on the Glass. So there's a cloud-based API that's uh, integrated into it, and you know, it's uh, it, it's it's out there. It's, it's a bit early, but it's something that we'll see what kind of adoption really you know starts to take place if people start coming out with some apps pretty quickly. I think there'll be a lot of interest. The My Glass Companion app has gone live in the Google Play Store. What can you tell us about that app? What's it going to be used for in conjunction with Google Glass? Well, yeah, the main features are that it enables the you know the GPS, the SMS messaging, the integration of all those things. You know, it shows off a bunch of the uh, apps functionality um, and, and the, the functionality of the actual Google Glasses. It uses the signature card UI. Um, so again, it's a companion app, and it, and it helps integrate your your world that you take in and you communicate through the glasses. You know, to your you know Android device or computer or whatever it is. Now, can Google Play Store users download the app even if they don't have Google Glass? Yeah, they actually you can uh, install the app, um, but obviously without the glasses, um, it's something that uh, you know it's not going to really do you any good. Um, so it's, I think Google said uh, that downloading it would be a waste of time, but you know you're welcome to install it and take a look at it. 
Um, but uh, it's, it's made specifically to interact with the classes. Thus far, what do the inner workings of the app reveal about Google Glass functionality? So what it does is it gives us a peek into all the features that we know about uh, regarding the glasses, the video aspect, um, how that's laid out, how, how it's going to, you know, integrate those things into that, into the, the application, the, the pictures, uh, gives you things like the device location, things where you may have been, uh, the Google Plus integration, Gmail, all of those things, you know, how you check in with that and look at, you know, what happened throughout the day, perhaps planning, perhaps your calendar, that kind of thing. So, you know, what we've seen so far, as far as the application goes, is really a picture of all of those things and how that integrates with, with your world. Google has also launched their Glass Setup page, a site to assist Glass users with the setup of their Glass unit, which is connected to their Google account. Uh, what else is on the Glass Setup page that developers in particular might find of interest? Well, namely um, that the uh, interface is, is pretty consistent with the app. It's a horizontal type layout. Um, it, it guides users through the setup process and it does so in a way that's really easy to understand. It's even got a QR code for the, the sync aspect of it. Um, you know, the focus is to maintain that experience in all aspects of the product and it's, it appears that they're doing that same type of uh, user experience focus and bringing that into the, the different applications uh, across the board. With these recent platforms being launched to support the uh, Google interface, why do you think Google hasn't announced an official release date for Glass as of yet? Well, again, we are in a developer preview state. Um, I think there's a lot really yet to be determined. Um, you know, there's no word on uh, public availability yet, but you know, there's there's speculation that says um, that uh, you know they're they're going to be released releasing these specs to the public. Um, and releasing the product to the public and it'll be within the year. So, you know, again, we're in this phase where there's, you know, going, going to be a lot of, you know, rampant development and there might be a different generation by the time that the things actually hit the street. You might be talking about some very bleeding edge um, uh, specs at that point, or at least comparable to what we see in smartphones today as far as bleeding edge. Earlier, we talked about the specifications of Glass. At this point, do you think it's the small form factor that is limiting um, the expansion of, of what Glass is actually capable of, or do you think that they're just kind of waiting for rollouts of Glass in the future? Um, I, I think that they're really bringing everything that they that they is available that they can um, ideally bring to this uh, this product initially. They certainly want it to be a success. Um, you would want to develop with something with a with a future uh, focus and a future basis of, you know, what that baseline hardware level and the specs are going to be, you know, because it just saves a lot of time as far as development goes. So, you know, I, I would have to say that this right now. Uh, the product that we're looking at is a very bleeding edge product uh, from that regard and um, it's just really what's what's possible at this point in terms of what they can cram into that form factor um, but you know again it, it's something that we may see that evolve and increase in terms of certain specs in terms of usable memory in terms of 3g connectivity uh, which may end up being or 4g connectivity may end up being a component that's actually built into the glasses at some point because as of right now as i mentioned you know it's got the wi-fi it's got the bluetooth connectivity but it would be you know way more valuable if you can integrate it you know widespread you know wherever you go and get a subscription or whatever well, I know many of our users, uh, of our viewers, are definitely looking forward to the launch of Google Glass. So thank you so much for joining us today, John. Thank you. And still to come on SiliconANGLE TV, which country has the fastest internet? And is Twitter experimenting with television? But first, Wikibon co-founder and CTO David Floyer stops by to fill us in on the latest from the OpenStack Summit in Portland.